Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about fresh and fit for 22. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. We break you off with the Mindfulness Minute. I have two jewels for you this week. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. That's part one. And adding to that is, I am always doing that which I cannot do in order that I may learn how to do it. Word up. And I thought that was fitting for the topic today because we're talking about getting in shape. Everyone has that New Year resolution of getting in shape and losing this and and losing this amount of weight and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to get fit this year. So joining us today is a very special guest, my brethren, Corey Richardson, Corey Richardson from Phase Fitness. Hey, this is the family here. Love you guys. Love you too. Um, So let's jump into it. Um, every like I said, everybody has that resolution, and I think a lot of people jump out the gate real hard, and that kind of makes them. You can answer if this is true or not, but I think that's one of the reasons they fall off quick is because they go in so hard um, at the start of the new year, and they do stuff to just way out of what they're used to doing, and maybe out of their comfort ability and you know too strenuous for their body to go so hard i see a lot of people doing like starvation diets and stuff like that i won't say starvation i'll say deprivation diets um so what is a good way for someone to start their fitness journey well you said it you know people come in and they dive in it's not a problem with diving in but first in order to dive into something you gotta have a vision you know like they say, people without vision perish. So if you don't know exactly what you're going for, you don't know why you're going for it, then you're going to do it for a second, then you're going to stop. You know, it's like, okay, I see it all the time. Every year, we, we all see it. Beginning of the year, everybody got these New Year resolutions. They jump into something, especially in the gym. They come in, first three weeks, they're going hard. After three weeks to four weeks gone, it started dwindling them down. Well, what it is, is they really don't understand what the journey takes. They think it's gonna come instantly. Oh, I'm gonna go into this three weeks in, I'm gonna lose such and such pounds and I'm good. No, this is a lifestyle. This ain't something that you can just jump into and think it's gonna happen overnight. It's not a microwave society. You know, that's where most people think of it is, but no. And that's why they end up going to get these different surgeries and stuff like that. Because they want it instantly. It's not something that's going to happen instantly. The average person loses 1 to 1.5 pounds every week if they're doing it correctly. That's the average person. Now, you know, you have some some cases where above average, you know, I have some clients that lost anywhere between 30 to 40 pounds in a matter of month to three months. But like I said, those aren't average, but they were consistent. They were consistent on their nutrition. They were consistent on their workouts. And there was, they had their mindset consistently motivated. And that's where it all starts, the mind. So if you're going into it thinking that, oh, I'm going to lose this by such and such time, you're going into it in the wrong kind of mindset. You got to go into it falling in love with the journey, not the destination. Word up. And, and you Word talked up. about, cons- yeah, for real, for real. You talked about um, motivating, being motivated. What is something that someone can do to stay motivated? Look in the mirror. Plain and simple. It goes back to knowing what your goal is, knowing where you want to be. If you see yourself at a certain weight, certain size, whatever, stay focused on that. That's your motivation. Nothing else can motivate you. I tell, I tell my lady clients, go get that little black dress that you want. Go get it in the size that you want and hang it up. Look at it every day. Try it on every day. 
And until you can fit it, that keeps you motivated. If you don't, if you look in the mirror, you're not happy with what you see, that keeps you motivated. But no, nothing and no one can really keep you motivated but so. Or, uh, and, and your expert opinion, what is more important or are they dually important, the exercise or the diet? Nutrition, 80% nutrition, 20% fitness. You can work out all day long, but if your nutrition is crap, it's still gonna have the same result. Uh, or, and, and I think that goes into play when I see these people doing um, deprivation diets is that yeah, you might drop some pounds real quick, yep. but they're gonna come back real quick. Yep. Uh, they actually because, come back quicker, and you come back more. Or mm. yeah, because a lot of times you aren't getting nutrition when you're, you know, just depriving yourself. You aren't getting nutrition to fuel muscle, um, mm -hmm. cognitive thinking, and and things like that. You know, I, you have clients. Well, I have people's clients that they go into it they come to me like i need to tone up and they get there they be like yeah i have this this hanging here and this hanging here and this hanging here the first question i asked them was okay so how'd you go about losing that weight and they like, oh, i walked on the treadmill i did the elliptical and then i said okay so you do any strength training well no i just did i just did the cardio okay your nutrition was it on point well you know, I cut out meat, I only ate vegetables, and I said, okay, so where do you get your protein from? Because, you know, protein builds muscle. And they were like, well, I don't want to be big. No, it's not about being big. You still have lean muscle mass. So in order to keep your muscle, your skin as, uh, elasticity, you know, stand pretty much conformed to the muscle mass that you do have, you first have to be doing some kind of resistance training and that's not to be weight but it has to be resistance training and then two you have to have the proper amount of protein to fuel your muscles in order for them to grow and sense to lose the body fat body fat not just weight because when you're losing weight you're losing muscle mass and fat mm. yeah and that's something I, I don't think people think about is losing muscle when they losing weight because they're just stepping on a standard scale and they're just like, oh, I'm dropping pounds. So it, I'm, it's on. Yeah. You know, we have a 21 day challenge that we have, we do every month. And that's one thing that people, when they come to me, like, I want to join a challenge. OK, so what's your goal? Oh, I want to lose 50 pounds. I say, OK, so what's your weight now? And they tell me, I'm like, so you want to get down to like, say somebody told me 180 pounds. They, so you want to get down to 130 pounds. Well, yeah, because I remember when I was 130 pounds, I looked like this. That don't mean you're going to look like that now. Because back then, when you look, when you were 130 pounds, you had so much muscle tone. So over time, you lost muscle tone and gained more fat. So therefore, you want to actually build some muscle while you're losing your body fat. That way, you won't be super skinny. But I don't see any people do that too. Oh, I, I don't want to lose no weight. I've lost shape. Yes because you lost weight it's a difference between weight and body fat word up and, and i've been noticing in myself and i want you to talk about the importance of move just moving um i've started a job three months ago now and not change even changing my diet which my diet was pretty cool i mean i could do a you can always do tightening up but just i work in a warehouse so just actually doing that physical work for eight hours not changing my diet i've dropped like 25 pounds in the last three months right and, you're burning, and I think them, lot, you're burning them calories yeah yeah that's what i'm saying a lot of people don't realize the um of just moving like you say you don't have to um hit the weights real hardcore um but moving itself you know yeah. when you're um What's the word when you're just stagnant and just sitting all day, especially a lot of us in our society. Now we have most of us have sit down desk jobs or, you know, before this job, I was driving. So I was sitting down all those hours a day. 
and yeah. especially when you get up there in our age it's real easy to start your muscles already start naturally deteriorating and if you yep. aren't use them they go quicker oh yeah and that's a that's a very good point because you know people think that oh i could i work all day so i can come home and sit down and not do anything well over time you know it's like the kind i'm reading a book now called the compound effect and he was talking in that about three friends you had one friend who decided okay well i'm not going to change anything i'm just going to buy me another tv you know and just relax every day after work then you had one friend that said okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna take 125 calories out of my diet every day i'm gonna read a book and i'm gonna go for a walk every day and then you had another friend who didn't change anything stayed stayed exactly the same well in a matter of was it i think he said it was 21 years something like that it was either 21 years or 21 weeks i think it was 21 years but in a matter of 21 years the one guy had gained like 100 pounds the guy that you know bought the tv and you know just was doing anything the other guy who decided he was going to change some things he ended up losing like 70 something pounds And, you know, his his marriage and his family life with his kids and everything was perfect. The other guy who didn't change nothing, nothing changed. Everything was still exactly the same way it was. So it's all about a matter of, first of all, the mindset of where you want to be at. And second of all, getting up and doing something about it. Like you said, just just changing what you do every day. Now you working at a you working at a job where you wasn't doing you wasn't doing that much moving around before but now hey you moving constantly for about eight hours so therefore your body's burning them calories you're doing certain motions pretty much most of the night which is like resistance training because you're constantly moving those muscles using those muscles that you probably didn't use before so now you're actually somewhat building some muscle because in your in, in that, that kind of person's case that's new to them so therefore those are new muscles being used so those muscles are going to actually get a little bit stronger than what they were because they're being used if people people get stagnant a lot because they think oh well i'm tired i've done this all night or all day now i'm just gonna come home and relax not realizing that relaxing for so long is being detrimental to them and not helping them yeah we do need rest but we still need to be moving because we still need to make sure that we're burning off all the excess calories that we're putting in or, or, and, and what did you say the name of that book was again the, the compound effect the compound effect yeah or, by dan hardy it's it's real good with darren hardy it's real good i, I bought it last year and I listened to the audio book, but right now, me and my fiance doing this uh, 75 hard challenge where you got to be consistent on everything for 75 days. You can't, you got to work out twice a day. You got to eat right. You got to drink a gallon of water. You got to uh, read 10 pages of a book every day. You got to listen to motivational uh, videos or speaking every day for at least uh, 45 minutes. You know, wow. doing that shows wow. it builds consistency. And as you're building consistency, you're changing certain aspects of your life because you create new habits. Huh. And creating new habits makes, you know, new results. All right. Uh. Okay, so first of all, I got to say, um, pick it, I'm going to need that credit card because the fitness guru... <laughs> And today's show just said that I need to go buy that dress so I can look at it every day <laughs> and feel about getting into it. So I'm gonna need you to run me that card. Um, but what should we do, um, Corey, when when we hit a slump? You know, we've been doing good for a little while. Today I came home from work, it was a bad day. I don't feel like doing nothing. And then tomorrow I came home from work and uh, I don't feel like doing nothing again. And it felt so good because I spent two days in a row where I didn't do nothing. How do I get out of this slump that I'm in now? I'm comfortable chilling, doing nothing. 
what can I well, do? Well, now you you created that you created a habit of not doing nothing. And you got that's what you just got to get back into remembering what the goal is, what the ultimate goal is. I have clients that do that, you know. They join the 21 day challenge. They do good for the first week and a half. Mm-hmm. Then something happens, you know. I had one client. She I think it was she was in a car accident. So she took a couple of days off. You know, she was she wasn't hurt, but mentally she was shaking. She took a couple of days off. And when I checked in on her, she was like, Oh, I haven't been doing anything. I said, Okay, so let me ask you, do you still want to achieve your goal? She said, Yeah. I said, Okay. So look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself constantly, what is your goal? And then you gotta ask your, you gotta ask yourself, do you really want to achieve that goal? Or is the little hiccup that happened in your life the major thing that can really stop you from achieving? Oh. And if it is, okay, you know, I mean, that's fine and dandy because only you know the answer to that. But if it's something that you know is not going to stop you, then you can't let it stop you. I say this: my fiance, her dad died in November. That's when I moved down here. Her dad died in November. For about a week and a half, she didn't do anything. And then one day she got up, she looked in the mirror, and she's like, hold on, this ain't me no more. And I said, why you say that? She said, cause, you know, I done picked up like 10, 15 pounds. And I said, okay. I said, but your dad just died. You know what I mean? You're grieving. She said, yeah, but this ain't me. I know this ain't me. I wasn't going to sit up there and say, oh, you need to get up and do this. That's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm there for you, whatever you need to do. She realized it wasn't her. So she got up. She said, okay, we need to start going back to the gym. And that's what we did. You know, Mm -hmm. I hadn't stopped, but I wasn't going to make her do anything. Right. Because at the end of the day, making someone do anything is ultimately going to have them stop anyway. Because it's not their decision. Very true. Mm -hmm. Or... So let me ask you about um, nutrition. You know, I've I've seen some studies here recently to say if you don't get up and do any work, then you don't need to eat breakfast. And of course, you know, growing up, we were always taught breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So should we be eating breakfast? Should we be eating three meals a day? Should we be eating more? Should we be eating less? Well, I say it like this. Your metabolism is like a campfire. And if you ever been camping or you got a fireplace and you got that fire going, if you don't keep putting wood on the fire, what happens? The fire goes out. Mm-hmm. That's what food is to your metabolism. Now, it has to be proper nutrition. So therefore, you don't want to just be eating muffins, cakes, and stuff like that. You want something that's going to actually burn in your system. Mm-hmm. You know, you need like com- is it complex carbs. Yeah, complex carbs. I think it's complex carbs. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> but you need proper carbs. Carbs like oatmeal, sweet potatoes, uh, whole grains, different things like that those actually get to your system a lot easier and have fiber which helps get to your system Mm -hmm. and clean your system out then proper proteins you want lean proteins and not just any kind of protein because you don't want a lot of fat in your protein you don't want to be taking in a lot of fat especially if you're not doing anything right you always want to take in proteins but if you're not doing anything you want to take in a lot of fats and you don't want to take in a lot of carbs because the carbs end up sitting on you and then turn to sugar. So that means I can't stop at McDonald's every morning because that's my <laughs> breakfast, right? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I shoot. I say this: if you stop at a McDonald's, get get egg whites, and pretty much that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I said pretty much that's it. Egg whites or, and, and a black egg coffee. Egg. In a black, black coffee. coffee. Yeah, well, that black coffee is gonna is gonna help you get some have some kind of energy throughout the day, and it's a it's a fat burn. Okay. But it has to be black. <laughs> it can't have no sugar, no creams, no nothing. And when I tell okay, a lot of people that, like, right black coffee nasty. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I you know, I, I was talking to one of uh, the customers at work, and, and you know, we were both saying that you know a lot of people don't like black coffee because they don't drink good quality coffee. Mm, you know, yes. like I, and I used to go to record store day; they would serve coffee um, for the people in line because you're waiting in line for hours, and they would have, you know. Uh, Ethiopian Blue Mountain um, coffee, um, which Ethiopia is supposed to have some of the best um, coffee beans. Uh, Jamaica is supposed to have some of the best coffee yeah. beans. And of course, Peru. And drinking that black coffee versus like McDonald's black coffee or Speedway's black coffee is a, a, a whole really big different. difference. Because yeah. it has its own distinct flavor because of the berries. Uh, and supposed to be one of the best coffees that I'll never try is Macaque coffee. Mm. Um, I don't know if you I heard know of that. How... I've never tried that. Well, let me tell you where Macaque coffee comes from. <laughs> <laughs> that that ain't, ain't that the poop bean? No, <laughs> yes. this is the, the, the uh, yeah, that and uh, spit bean, spit and poop yeah. beans. The Macaque, <laughs> Macaque monkeys eat the bean, yeah. I guess they they. You know, when it's, it's in their stomach or in their, their saliva, breaks off the coating of it. Yeah. And it, you get right down <laughs> to the flavor of it, supposed to. <laughs> but it comes from a cat monkey. So that's what my cat coffee is. Yeah, oh, cool. I, I see. I read something on there and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I ever tried that. Because the thing I read was they was talking about it. They they get it out, they poop. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah. I know um, the, at most places, you know, like the speedway and stuff like that. If you do get black coffee from there, the best thing to get is the Columbia, because everything else is. Yeah, just, that's that's one of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, just one of my favorite affordables is Columbia, because you know it's still affordable. Because I know that Ethiopian coffee and the Jamaican uh, coffee are can be kind of costly, especially oh, yeah. if you have a Keurig and you're trying to get K cups for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shoot, you gotta pay. You gotta pay to get it here. <laughs> right. Right. So I have a question about um, exercising. Like you, you talked about exercises, and, you know, being important. I can't afford a gym membership. So what are some exercises that I can do at home or maybe even at work? Like, for example, we have an elevator at my job and my office is on the second floor. So I've been I started small. So instead of taking the elevator every time I need to come up or down, I'll take the elevator up and then I'll walk down or I'll walk up and then take the elevator down because the um, because of COVID, we switched our stairwells. So the up stairwell is closest to my office. So it's easier for me to take the upstairs, you know, up, up stairwell because it's right into my office. But the downstairs um, stairwell is all the way down the hall and then down and I got to, to walk all the way down to the other hall to get to where I'm going. So I usually, you know, take the elevator down and take the steps up. But when I'm at home, what are some simple things that I can do, you know, that is exercise to get me moving if I can't afford to, or not even can't afford, but I don't have the time to go to the gym every day because of my work hours. Well, to answer your question on that, I'm going to come to that in a second. But the stairwell thing, because you said it's easier to do this and then go all the way to the other end. Remember yeah, this. I'm out of breath, but if I take the damn thing, I'm out of breath by the time I get to where I'm going. And yeah, I can't be, I can't be like, oh, Miss Jones, here's the paper. Yeah, so. But remember this. What's easy for you to do makes your life hard. But what's harder mm. for you to do makes your life easier in the long run. Jewel. 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 So just remember that. Oh, I'm but, trying. I said small steps. I know. It, hey, and that's the thing. At least, you, at least you create no small habits. And the small habits in long term create big habits. So you know it gets you results. So you start. That's a good thing. You know, I, I had a client that she said she was in our 21 day challenge. She said she really couldn't do the exercise because her, from her words, they were built for skinny girls. And I said, okay. <laughs> I said, you got stairs in your house, right? She said, yeah. I said, okay. Within an hour, go up and down the steps like 10 times. Up and down. Up and down is one. Do it 10 times within an hour. So she started doing that. She was like, after about a week, she was like, hey, I, 
I got more wind. I said, yeah, because you created the habit of moving within an hour up and down, up and down. You know, so do creating like a small once an hour? Once, no, 10 times within an hour. So it could be like, so within an hour, just walk up and down the steps 10 times and that's it? Yeah. Hmm. Cause you created a small, that's a small thing that you can do to start. That's going to help you get your win. That's going to help you do some kind of cardio going up steps. It's like walking up a hill. That's work. Mm-hmm. That's definitely work. Coming down is the easy part. Going up is the hard part. Yeah. Going definitely. down, you got momentum. See, that's and that's why up. I take the elevator down and I take the steps up because we have yep. two two flights of stairs. So I'm going up quite a few steps to get to my office and then taking the elevator down. So I'm what do, what do this? How how many how long you been doing it? Um, two years now. Okay, two years. Oh well, shoot, you you ready to graduate and taking the stairs all the way, both up and down. <laughs> Family show. I'm cussing. You, you graduating? <laughs> no, sir. This is a no, but show. usually, okay. usually, what I would do with a client, I would say, okay, do go up and then down the elevator for like a week, and then the next week, choose at least two days where you go up and down the stairs, and then the week after that, three days. Week after that, four days. Then you graduate to the to five days up and down the stairs. Mm-hmm. You know, the small steps. Now to answer your question yeah, like about that. home workout, I always tell people you can you can do that anybody should be able to do. You can get a chair, do stand up sit downs, like you're doing squats. Okay. But instead of sitting down, you tapping your butt on the chair and standing right back up. Do, do that for like, if you're counting reps, start out at 10, work your way up to 30. If you're doing time, do it for 40 seconds and rest for 20 seconds. Ultimately, the, the time way is the best way because you're moving as fast as you can for 40 seconds, taking 20 seconds reps. Therefore, you're only allowing your heart rate to slow down for 20 seconds before you start back into another ex- another set of exercise. Okay. So you can do those. You can do um, for a beginner hand release push-ups or wall push-ups. And I always say hand release is better because you're on the ground. Your body's flat into a plank. You're laying down flat on the floor. You take your hands off the floor, put them back down and push up off the floor and then go back down to your stomach laying back on the floor it's the best way to build up strength and it's the best way to actually learn how to do a proper push up on a wall it's good but you're still not engaging your core right. the only thing you're using is your arms i would rather for you to engage your whole body and struggle to do it for like 5 to 10 reps than on the wall doing 20 to 30 reps Cause the only thing you're doing then is working your arms. Okay. So now, so, would you recommend and, push-up bars? Like push-up bars, yeah. if you can do a push-up, yeah. But I'm saying for the actual beginner that has, that cannot do a one push-up. Right. You cannot okay. do one push-up. Do hand release push-ups. Okay. I like. And that. then <clears throat> do um do crunches anywhere from 15 to 20. Now, my fiance over here, she'll tell me, are oh, you being too hard on them? No, because anybody can do 15 crunches because all you're doing is taking your shoulder blades off the ground, coming back down. Shoulder blades, back down. With your knees up. Right, and explain so, to people that, 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 you know, a lot of people try to go all the way up, and that's not really good for your back, is it? No, because for one, that's a sit-up. That's a different exercise. It works the entire core. And until your core gets strong enough, you shouldn't be doing that. Because like you okay. said, you can hurt your back. Your back is part of your core. Right. So you're trying to build your core muscles up so you can have the strength to do all those different exercises. And then you proper, you want to do them properly. Most people mm-hmm. put their hands behind their head and do this. So they're pulling, now you're hurting your neck. On neck. Yeah, yeah. pulling on the neck. Yeah. And yep. trying to pull have my themselves up. Yep, put your hands in front of you like this and prepare yourself up. 
if, if you just rock it okay cool because all you're doing is taking your shoulder blades off the ground off the ground and when you're doing it you're broke when you come up you're blowing out you breathe in when you come down that's proper breath techniques for those because you want to empty your core as you contract it when you re when you relax that's when you want to breathe and then finally i would say jumping jacks and you got modified means. jumping jacks huh i said yes I you like got modified jumping, jumping jacks. jacks yep jumping jacks you most a lot, lot of people say they can't do jumping jacks that's okay do modified go up step one leg out step back down step the other leg out step back down but i always prove to them that they can do a jumping jack they really just don't want to you know? yeah, yeah, anybody can do 10 jumping jacks jack. Yeah, that's uh -huh. too much movement. Modified jumping <laughs> jacks is too much. I'd rather do the the. I like the old. The speed. whole thing, get it, yet, get it done yeah, and over. All of that. <laughs> so I have or, to ask. Well, because, go ahead. Wait a minute. I'm looking at your shirt, so I got one last question. Talk to us about products that we should be using. You know, it's that time of year, so every commercial break has the new weight loss. Drink this. <laughs> take this. You know this supplement will do it and you don't have to do exercise so talk to us about what we should be using or what kinds of products are, are better for us than the ones we see on tv i say this most products that you can buy over the counter have a lot of fillers in. you know of course i have herbalife shirt on i'm an herbalife representative so me personally reason why i chose herbalife because I was the guy that went to GNC all the time, spending like two, three hundred dollars every other week. And what's on it? Because of all the fillers that are in a lot of the proteins or the meal replacement shakes. You know, when I found Herbalife, Herbalife is mainly natural. It's made from soybean. You have um, pea protein. You have whey protein. You know all these different things in Herbalife it's all natural so they they Herbalife itself owns all the different farms and things that they get all of their their material from so it's not outsourced so they they actually regulate everything that's going on in their product and Herbalife itself has ex-surgeon generals you know they have teams of doctors and stuff like that that examine things and they go through examination for like maybe three or four years before they even put it out hmm. so you know they make sure that they can't get tapped on anything you know unlike it's a lot very of these well companies. tested yeah you got a lot of companies they test things for like maybe three or four months and then put it out on the market and then three or four years three or four years later you hear oh well if you tried this mm -hmm. you know you might be able illegally to get this this um dang on was it uh what did they lawsuit class action oh, yeah, yeah. class yeah you class action compensation. if you throw right. your arm out of your ear you can get <laughs> entitled to compensation i say this herbal life has been around since i was 10 years old wow i'm 51 now be 52. that's how long herbal life been around and it's been it's been tested 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 people done tried to sue couldn't sue because they couldn't they nothing happened you know so the thing is this if a company's been around that long mm -hmm. and it's still growing it's, it's not just here it's in 94 countries and still growing you look at it on the stock market stocks are still going up so therefore to me that's saying that they got longevity i'm cool with that right. Right. now there are other products on the market that you can buy at like the vitamin shops and stuff like that that are good too you know uh what's the one my friend used uh i can't think of the name of it uh shoot hey it'll come to me but he's a bodybuilder you know he's an all natural bodybuilder too you know he loves he's, he lives by these products he actually is sponsored by them so of course he's going to use those because he's sponsored by them but I know some bodybuilders that use Herbalife. Actually, I know one of the bodybuilders right now. He's number nine in the nation. Wow. All Herbalife products. 
he was, he's a physique competitor. He's also an Herbalife representative, but he's number nine in the nation. So, you know, that says a lot about that. Yeah. When you look at when you look at different supplements and stuff like that, first of all, you gotta find what works for you. Because everything that works for everybody else might not work for you. Uh-huh. And then two, it's not just the supplement. It's about consistency. Because consistency on anything will get you some good results or bad results. It depends on what you're consistently doing. So if you're consistently putting good nutrition in your body, you're going to consistently get good results. If you're half doing good nutrition, then half doing like cakes and donuts, <laughs> don't expect nothing. Right. You know, I, I had one client, I, had to let, I, I literally had to let her go. I was training her, you know, she was, she started using products and after like two months, nothing changed. And I'm like, so what's going on? I said, walk me through a day in the life of you right now, you know? Well, you know, I have my shake in the morning, but then for lunch, I always stop at McDonald's. Then I go, I'll go hang out with the girls at night. We get this, 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 this. And I said, but that ain't what you telling me throughout the weeks. Yeah, I know, but I didn't, I didn't want you to get on me. I'm like, so you, <laughs> I said, you not following the plan first of all and second of all you sit up here saying that you gotta get the results that you want but you're not following the plan right well you know i just thought i could do this you can you can do anything you want to do i'm not gonna stop you but just know this i don't want my name tied to it. right no hard feelings i gave right. her money back and that was that yeah yeah your reputation is on the line and, yeah, and speaking you know I mean? of that, with 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 all the clients and stand fit yourself and um and all, and all the challenges you do, what do you do for self care? Self care, well, when I get up in the morning, I do I do some prayer and meditation. Then I I read and listen to personal development, and then every day I spend at least an hour by myself. And right now, since I work nights and I, I work an hour away, that's perfect time for just self-reflection. You know, that long drive, and it's not a city drive; it's a backcountry drive. So mm-hmm. I just sit there. Sometimes I'm listening. I'm quiet, I'm just driving down the road, thinking. You know, it's I love fishing. That's one thing I definitely do. I haven't done anything since I moved down here, but when I was back back home. That's, that was my main source of self-care. I would go fishing, you know, I go I go creek wading. I walk down the creeks, nothing. No kind of city noise, no nothing. I don't care if I was in the middle of the city, nothing. And all I would do was relax. You know, relaxing to some people is, you know, they gotta get away, they gotta go on vacation. You can find all kinds of ways to relax anywhere you are. It's all about yeah. being to self, meditating. And meditation don't mean you gotta sit there, close your eyes and zone. That ain't, med- that's that's some that's a form of meditation. But other meditation is just being quiet. Listening to your thoughts. Uh-huh. Listening to nature. Those are forms of meditation. Or no. So that's one, that's one of my favorite ways of self care is re- meditating any kind of way I can. That's dope. I like that. And before we get out of here, let's get into my favorite part of the show. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Brain science, 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 science. <clears throat> All right. So to go along with our theme about fresh and fit for 2022, we're talking about health and weight loss and fitness. So we give you the brain science behind why exercise is good for your brain and every cell in your body so we we tend to look at exercise and nutrition as oh i'm just losing weight or i'm trying to fit into that dress but it really does affect your overall health from head to toe many americans start off each each new year with resolutions to lose weight and gym memberships they typically rise in january but by march the resolutions have been dropped the pounds didn't melt as expected and the gym shoes get kicked back into the closet While exercising may help some people lose weight and maintain their weight loss, most fitness experts say 
people might overestimate how many calories they burn when they're working out or they simply may not do enough to move the scale that 30 minute cardio workout that left you sweaty and breathless may have felt like a grueling marathon but it may have really only burned 200 to 300 calories regular exercise offers many benefits beyond burning calories so there are plenty of reasons to keep moving Research has shown that exercise affects pretty much every cell in the body, not just our heart, not just our muscles, but it also affects our other organs. Exercise is something that is vital for good health. Among the the benefits listed are sharper thinking, less depression and anxiety, better sleep, help with weight management, stronger bones and muscles, reduced risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and cancers, the colon, and other organs. Exercise also leads, wait for it, to better sex. To obtain substantial health benefits, the federal health guidelines advise adults to do at least 150 to 300 minutes a week of moderate intensity physical activity or 75 to 150 minutes a week of vigorous physical activity or an equivalent combination of the two. Exercise helps us to live longer. It improves our health outcomes, largely independent of weight loss. So even if you don't lose weight, it still is doing great things for your brain and your body. Physical activity works on multiple mechanisms within the body, and that's how it could potentially help prevent chronic conditions and therefore prevent early death. Sedentary people who get moving can start feeling better right away other people it takes a little bit longer before you start feeling better but that doesn't mean stop the first thing to focus on as Corey told us is your mental health that is the first thing people notice i feel better i have more energy i sleep better but then you could just go down a list of chronic diseases i can't tell you a disease that happens to you that isn't helped by physical activity and mental active acuity that's important so in terms of benefits, he encourages people, Corey, he, Corey being our he, encourages people <laughs> to keep going even if you aren't losing weight. Too often, this singular focus on losing weight and thinking that if I don't lose weight, the exercise isn't helpful and therefore I'm going to stop. The weight has little to do with the actual benefits of exercise. If you can get people who are overweight to be active, they can get the same benefits as somebody who is naturally thin. If you are at a normal weight and you aren't physically active, you are still putting yourself at risk for a lot of health conditions. People tend to think that, oh, I'm skinny. I don't need to exercise. But exercise isn't just about losing weight. It affects every cell in your body. Yes. Word up word up and before we get out of here Corey, tell the people how they can get up with you for your services and your very very dope advice well on facebook you can hit me up at Corey richardson uh you'll see me on there got a suit i'm smiling and then (laughs) on instagram hit me up at phase fitness that's p-h-a-i-z-e fitness and i'm always open to answer questions help anyone that's the goal help change the world physically physically fit physically mentally physically and spiritually word up and of course you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast we're on facebook ig twitter tiktok uh you can watch us on youtube and on facebook and you can listen to the podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast and that is our show for today it's your boy picket fence I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out. And we out. Peace.